So if you guys take a look at today's assignment, it's going to be called balancing chemical equations. Okay. So before we get started on the new topic, we're going to go over some information we learned before. Um, and I'll tell you guys what to write down, what not to write down. You guys don't need to write this first part down. Um, you guys already should know this, but a chemical reaction, it's where you turn one chemical into a different chemical. That's pretty much what it is. We've talked about this already. Now, the part that you guys do need to write down is this right here. Okay, we've gone over this before, but I still need you guys to write this down because it'll be very important for today. Okay, for a general chemical equation, you always have the reactants on the left and the products on the right side of an arrow, okay? So in a chemical equation, you have reactants on the left of an arrow and products on the right. We talked about this before, but a reactant is just something you start off with. It's kind of like your ingredients in like a recipe and the products is the thing that you produce or the thing that you make. Okay. You guys don't need to write down this section on the bottom, but make sure you guys have this part right here because this is going to be very important for today. So again, a chemical reaction is basically where you turn one or more chemicals into different chemicals. And then we structure the equation like this, reactants on the left, products on the right. All right, so I'm gonna leave that up there. I'm gonna scroll down just a little bit. Um, but here we have an example of a chemical equation. And so we have two chemicals that we're mixing. The first chemical is H2. Um, you only need to write down this first part right here. You don't need to draw the picture. Um, the first chemical is H2, which is made out of two different hydrogens. And it's combining with Cl2, which is made out of two Cls. And it's gonna make HCl, okay? So this is basically what a chemical equation looks like. Again, you only need to write down the equation right here. You don't need to copy down these pictures. <clears throat> All right, so we're gonna actually get started on the problem solving now, but before we do any questions about this, pretty simple so far, should be reviewed. Okay. So if you guys take a look at this equation, it's just telling us that if I have one H2 molecule and one Cl2 molecule, it's going to make an HCl molecule. But if you guys take a look at this, you're going to notice a problem, okay? Because this equation right now does not make sense. How many hydrogens are on the left side of the arrow? If you guys take a look at it. There's one H2, but H2 is made out of how many hydrogens? Yeah, it's two hydrogens, right? So we have two hydrogens. How many chlorines are on the left side? Two, there's two of them. But how many hydrogens are on the right side? Yeah, there's only one. And there's only one chlorine. So if you guys take a look at this doesn't make any sense, right? You can't put in two and then get out one. It's not chemistry is not magic. We can't just automatically get rid of things. And so this is what we call an unbalanced equation. Okay, so just make sure you jot that word down somewhere. It's unbalanced because we're not balancing the number of elements we have on the right side and the left side. Okay. So what we're gonna be learning how to do today is learning how to balance these chemical equations. And this is what's gonna help us um, basically do all of our labs coming up for this unit. Um, if we don't know how to balance, we won't be able to run any of the reactions. Okay. All right, so in order to balance out these equations, what we need to do is we need to count how many of each element we have on both sides. So we said that we have two hydrogens and two chlorines. And on the right side, we have one hydrogen and one chlorine. So which side needs more of each element? The right side, the product side, good. So what that means is I'm going to have to add one more HCl. So I'm going to add an HCl. Because if I add another HCl, how many 
H's do I have now on the right side? Two. And how many CLs do I have? Two, good. And now we have two hydrogens on both sides. We have two chlorines on both sides. So what that means is now it's balanced out. So the way that we would write this is since we have two HCLs, we just put a two in front of the molecule and that's it. So this is our new balanced chemical equation. I'll put a box around it just so that uh, you guys know what the final answer should look like, but it's gonna look like this. And that's pretty much it. All you need to do is count, add, and then just make sure you guys write a number in front of it if you added some. Okay. This number right here is called a coefficient. You guys might have heard this term before in math, uh, but a coefficient basically tells you how many of the molecules you have. Okay, so this two tells us that there are two HCl molecules. All right. Any questions about that? We'll start off with some easy problems and then we'll go on to some harder ones. Um, but that's going to be our first one for today. All righty. So let's move on to some practice problems now. All right. So we have this equation right here. Um, take a second to just copy this down right here, H2 plus O2, and then draw an arrow to H2O. If you guys want to try balancing it, you guys can start trying, um, but I'm going to take it step by step because I know it's still new, um, but just make sure you guys copy this down at least for now. All right, so hopefully you have a copy down. So what I like to do is usually I like to draw a little table, a little chart that has all the elements on it. So if you look on the left side, um, I'm gonna have a hydrogen and oxygen, and I have a hydrogen and an oxygen on the right side as well. So I'm gonna draw a little table just so that I can count how many of each element I have, just so I can keep track of things, okay? Okay, so if we look on the left side, so make sure you guys uh, keep in mind where the arrow is because that's what I mean by left side and right side. If you guys take a look on the left side, how many hydrogens do we have on the left side? Yeah, two. There's H2, which is two. And how many oxygens do I have? Two, so I'm gonna put a two there. So this table is just telling me how many we have on the left side versus how many we have on the right side, okay? Now, if you look on the right side, how many hydrogens are on the right side? Two. How many oxygens? One. Good. Okay, so it looks like the oxygen is not balanced. So what you want to do first is you want to add to the side that has less. Okay, add to the side with less. Okay, so we said that the right side has less oxygens. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to add an oxygen to the right side. However, I can't just add an oxygen by itself because if I just add oxygen by itself, now it's a different equation. Now it's not H2 plus O2 makes H2O. It means it makes H2O plus O. And so I can't add an O by itself. Instead, I have to add the entire molecule that O is inside of. So I have to add H2O. Okay. So again, you want to add the entire molecule, not, not just what you need. Okay, so if I add an H2O, how many oxygens do I have on the right side now? Two, yeah, I have one, two. So this number changes to two, but I also change the hydrogens. How many hydrogens are on the right side now? Four, yeah, two, four. Okay, so I balanced out the oxygens, but I did not balance the hydrogens. Okay, and like we said, we wanna add to the side with less. So I need to add to the side that has less hydrogens, which is the left side. So I'm gonna add H2, because again, you need to add the whole molecule and now we have two, four, and now we're good and ready to go. We're all balanced out. Okay, so the key steps here are you wanna to add to the side with less. You wanna add the entire molecule, okay? You can't just add the element you need. Okay, and you just keep doing this process, add to the side that has less, add the entire molecule until it's balanced out. And then the last step, 
is you want to write the coefficients. Okay, so the numbers in the front. Okay, so if we take a look at this equation, how many H2s do I have in total? How many of these do I have? So I have four hydrogens, but H2, I have one, two. So I'm gonna put a two in the front, right? We're talking about the entire molecule. I don't need to add, write a number here because it's just one. I still have the same number of O2, so I can just leave it blank. You can write one if you want to. And then how many H2Os do I have? Two, yeah. I have two of the entire molecule. Okay, make sure you guys are very aware of what the molecules are and what the elements are. You have four hydrogens, but it's inside of two separate H2O molecules. So what you need to provide for your answer is gonna be this right here, what's in the box. Okay, this is going to be your final answer. So again, uh, just follow these three steps. You want to add to the side that has less. You want to add the entire molecule. And then after you're all done balancing, you want to write the coefficients. You guys think you could try a harder one on your own? Yeah. Okay. Hopefully, I can give you a little bit of a challenge today. All right, so I'll give you guys two minutes. I want you guys to work with the person next to you. And you guys can try out this one right here. Again, I recommend that you guys make the table and then sure. start balancing. All right, I'll give you another minute to finish up. Okay, if you guys need a little hint, I'll give you guys the numbers. There's one here, two here. So I guess you're not done. Even if they're split up. They're already us Alan, this is just counting. You can't count to three for me? <laughs> uh, because there's one oxygen here and two oxygens here. So that's why it's three. Alrighty, guys. So I know this one was a little tricky with the counting. I think I got some of you guys already with the oxygens. Uh, so let's go over this. If you're finishing up and you want to try it out on your own, go ahead and finish quietly. But I'm going to start going over for the rest of us. Okay, so um, there is one carbon on the left side, and there are three oxygens on the right side because there's one here and there's two here. Okay, that's going to give us three. One carbon on the right side, and then two oxygens on the right side. 
Okay, so from there we can start adding until we can balance. Okay, so which side needs more oxygens, the left side or the right side? Yeah, the right side. So what I, that means is I need to add the entire molecule, okay? Make sure you guys remember that. You can't just add an oxygen by itself. You have to add the entire molecule that oxygen's inside. Okay, and when we do that, that's gonna change all of our numbers on the right side, okay? So how many carbons are on the right side now? How many carbons do we have? Two, yeah, exactly. I thought you guys were making a peace sign at me, sorry. There's gonna be two. And then how many oxygens do we have? Four. Four, good. Okay, so it looks like nothing is balanced now, but if you guys take a look at it, how many carbons do we need on the left side? We need to get it to two, so we need one more, and then we need one more of the oxygens, right? So should I add CO or O2? Yeah, I want to add CO because if I add CO, how many carbons do I have on the left side? Yeah, two. And then I'm going to have one, two, three, four oxygen. And now everybody is balanced. And so for your coefficients, you just put a two here because I have one, two. I can leave this blank because it's one. And I have one, two, CO2. So that's going to be your balanced chemical equation right here. Yeah, what's up? That like, like that middle. What middle one? Like that middle line. This right here? No, like the one in the middle. Like that blank line. This line? Oh, this blank yeah. line. The blank line just means that it's one. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Because we still counted this one, and so it's still O2. Yeah, good question. Any other questions about this one? I know this one's a little trickier. All right. So we'll do one last example before I let you guys get started on the assignment. This one is a lot of counting, but it's not too hard in terms of the balancing, okay? So don't freak out when you see it. It's a big equation language. Hey, you know it's being recorded, right? <laughs> okay, so we have this equation right here. Make sure that you guys are careful with the counting. Yeah, be careful with the parentheses. Everybody who's listening to this video. No, I'm not. This is Gabe. All right. Um, what time are we at? Let me see the time. Oh, I don't see the time. But at this time, Gabe said a bad word. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> All right, guys. Take two minutes to do this, and then we'll go over it together. I'm pretty sure they didn't even hear it. They might have heard it in the background. Well, let's just be real. Nobody watches this stuff. <laughs> Dang it.
this year. So, yeah, they get December and like January off. Yeah, they come in June. So that's how they make up the extra month. They make up the extra month like the calendar. Yeah. Anyway. Huh? Oh, we are. We come half of June, right? School. Everybody's least favorite thing. <laughs> I really wonder if this is getting recorded. <laughs> I just hear you yelling that name over and over again. <laughs> Alrighty, guys, let's go over this one and then we will be all done for today. Okay, so let's go over this. Whoever has their sound on, turn your sound off. Thank you. Thank you. A lot of work getting done there. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to make our table first. So we got to count all the elements. Okay, so we have copper. Whose sound is on? Drake. Turn your sound off, or I'm gonna have to confiscate your Chromebook. Okay, so we have copper, we have sulfur, oxygen, potassium, carbon, nitrogen. Gabe, be quiet. Why are you looking at her feet, dude? Why? Dude, you weird, man. The heck? Eyes up, eyes up, eyes up at the screen, buddy. Yeah. All right. Okay. Maybe I was wrong in my assessment, but if you're turned around looking down, that's where the that's where all the feet are. Anyway. All right, guys. I know you guys all are fascinated by feet, but let's look up. Okay. Hey, you know, I don't even know how we got to this kind of part of the conversation. I don't know, but let's balance this equation, okay? So you guys can start on your assignment. My bad. All right. Shh. Okay. So how many coppers do I have on the left side? Wait, what? How many coppers on the left side? One. So, yeah, so we have one copper because there's no number here. Okay, how many sulfurs do we have? One, yeah, we have one because there's no number here. How many oxygens are there? Four. So there's four oxygens. Yeah, do it. And then KCN, there's one for all of them. Okay. Are right, any questions about the counting? Okay, remember the number, the subscript numbers only apply to the element right in front of it, okay? It only applies to the oxygen right there. All right, let's go to the right side. How many coppers on the right side? One. Okay. Now, if we look at the parentheses, we said everything in the parentheses has to be multiplied by the number on the outside. So how many carbons are there in total? Two. Yeah, exactly. Two. And then same thing for nitrogen. There's going to be two nitrogens. Okay. All right. And then last but not least, how many potassiums? Two one sulfur and four oxygens. Okay, so hopefully you guys are able to do the counting. I know there's a lot of elements here, um, but the counting should not be too bad. If this was difficult for you, um, I recommend you guys practice the counting. Go back to some of the older assignments and you can get some practice counting the elements. Okay, so if you take a look at it, copper is balanced, sulfur is balanced, oxygen is balanced, but K, C, N are not balanced. Okay, so which side needs more, left side or right side? Yeah, left side. So we just add KCN, and there you go. We just put a two here, and we are all balanced out. That's it. Super easy. Yeah, it only looks complicated because the numbers are big. And so if you counted wrong, you might have done a lot more work that you didn't need to do and shouldn't have done. But So just make sure you guys are really comfortable with the counting. If you guys want to double check the count the counts with somebody else next to you, I'm totally cool with that on your assignments.
All right. So your assignment today is a little bit long. There's a lot of balancing because I need you guys to get a lot of practice before we combine this with dimensional analysis next time. So let me know if you have any questions. If you want to check your answers, I have the answer key up here. But good luck on your assignment, everyone.